Hi friends, it's Karina. Welcome. Um, I'm about to share with you a very interesting video. And this video is a live that I did on Facebook. Um, a few things is that it's not a full decoding of Black is King, but what I do do is talk about Beyonce and hidden symbolism that she has shown over the years and what it is really tied to when we think about the word demon. Um, I want to give you a disclaimer that I was walking outside. I was also going through a little bit of an emotional uh, moment. So um, there are there is some noise in the background, but it doesn't really mess with the audio. You can hear everything, but I would just say to maybe turn the audio down if you don't like loud noises. Um, also that it's kind of a rant, but if you have um, 30 minutes of time where you can just sit and listen, that's what this video is for, <laughs> okay? Because you'll just be listening to the audio. But within this, you are going to hear um, my connections to the word demon. And I think it's really profound. I think it's very powerful. I do take it seriously. And um, I want to portray that. If you have any interest in having me look at your astrology chart in the areas of the North Node, the South Node, um, Lilith, or anything like that, I will leave my information down below and we can talk about it. This type of reading would require like a live video or, or a phone reading because um, typically I just share audios for my astrology readings, but for this um, because it is a very sensitive subject, it would be in our best interest to do this um, like a typical phone or live, private live video. So um, thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope that you enjoy this. Here's the audio. <clears throat> Hi. Hello, everyone. It's Karina. I wanted to go live today because um, I'm currently going through certain transits that are really allowing me to understand the depths of the moon energy and I wanted to come to you with what I've learned with teachers that have you know shown me the way and to talk to you about the concept of demons demonic energy um, many of you have watched black is king and a lot of the energy in that as we can see from people who have just decoded it. It's tied to the moon, and when Beyonce did Lemonade, it was the same thing. Um, and they both are actually very much so related. Whether um, you realize it or not, it's astrologically related because it's talking about the two parts of the moon, okay? And um, when you're able to see that, you'll be able to... Uh, unlock your own abilities and powers when it comes to the moon because the moon is extremely powerful right um especially because of what is tied to it in astrology so in astrology the moon is tied to the nodes because the nodes are the north and south points of the moon and uh lilith is also tied to the nodes i mean lilith is, lilith is tied to the moon because Lilith is the black moon, right? Um, and there are four Liliths. One of them is not, not tied to the moon. It's the asteroid Lilith. But um, the main concept of Lilith that we talk about in astrology, right, Astro astrologically based, is either an oscillating point, which is a moving point. It's never stable. Or it is an actual... Um, just average point in the sky that is considered the dark side of the moon okay so when I'm talking about these entities in astrology right these concepts in astrology it's important to understand that they are tied to the moon first they're based off of the moon you cannot find a north node without the moon you cannot find Lilith without the moon 
And um, this is what leads me into the concepts of demons. Now, um, I get, I didn't realize I was going to make this about Beyonce, but it's just easy for me because, you know, I'm a big fan. And because of that, I follow what she says and does. And in the song Savage, she talks about being on demon time. And when this came out, I was like, well, what does she mean? You know, I wasn't really sure. And of course, conspiracies can fly all over the place. But what I know initially is that demon, right, is of the moon. So we need to make that correlation also when it comes to astrology. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm actually walking out. So let me just get to a place where it's not... Uh, so loud and I live in Brooklyn so everywhere is loud um, okay so when we think about the word demon right you can break it down and the word the prefix de means of or coming from something right and M O N is a shorter version of the word moon just like how M-O-N for Monday is also Moon Day, right? So whenever you see M-O-N, that is a, um, a stem of the word moon. So the demon is of the moon, okay? And so that's one way of, of looking like that. Now, there are different religious practices that will understand this thoroughly, but they stay in this place where it's evil and it's wrong right well even evil is not wrong right but it's it's wrong let's use the word wrong because we can break down the word evil another day but that it's wrong okay and um, it's it keeps you in the box especially when it comes to understanding what it is that you want it keeps you in the box especially in being able to be more powerful in life okay so there's another term that is used actually in Celtic Greek and um, I believe Hindu as well don't quote me on that which is called the daimon right it's either spelled D-A-I M-O-N or D-A-E M-O-N okay um, and when you say these words like when you say die before it versus d um there's something that i hear very clearly which is the concept of um duality meaning that there's two okay so if you look up where does the word demon come from or diamond you'll see that there is no difference that they're both the same thing right it's just that demon the word demon d-e-m-o-n is an archaic um, alternative way of saying daimon. So this word comes from um, uh, old cultural versions of the word daimon. And there is a movie out, I believe, that's based off of a book series. And this actually shows you what the concept of a daimon right what a diamond actually is all right i need you guys to hold on with me because as you make the connections you might be able to see the alternative um things that are being said especially when beyonce says it so hold on with me here right but there's a uh, movie i can't remember the movie somebody probably knows it better than i and um, these kids, they are all connected to this thing called a diamond. And it's like this, in the movie, it's depicted as an animal spirit, right? Um, and it follows them everywhere, protects them. And I want you to um, understand that uh, when you look up this word diamond, spelled D-A-E-M-O-N or D-A-I-M-O-N, that it talks about a entity or a force or a power, right? That it connects you to 
either God or the gods, depending on what you believe, right? Or your higher self, right? Um, it connects you to something bigger than the human body, okay? So um, this is very, very prominent and a very well-known term, right? It's just not very well-known in Western practices, but this is what it means, right? So look up the word diamond, D-A-E-M-O-N or D-A-I-M-O-N. That's, that's, that's what you're going to get. That's the definition that you're going to find versus demon, which you'll find something else. Um, but again, they're both the same word. And demon is actually just an alternative um, breakdown of the word diamond. Okay, so going back to how I initially started this, which is Beyonce saying being on that demon time, that she's also saying being on that diamond time because they're both the same word. And if that sounds like a stretch, just remember that Beyonce is always rocking or showing the rock, right? Or she has in the past showed the rock and she's been about the diamond, right? Which a lot of people, um, you know, can relate it to Rockefeller, but I want you guys to just think a little bit deeper, think a little bit more esoteric, that a diamond sounds a lot like the word diamond, right? So there's something deeper being said here. There's something more esoteric. And in my, through my eyes, astrological, because remember that I said that the word demon is of the moon. Okay, so everything here is about being connected to the moon. And when I, I also said that astrologically, there are other entities that are connected to the moon. You cannot find these parts of the chart without the moon. That is the North Node and the South Node and Lilith, right? Not Lilith the asteroid, Lilith the black moon and the oscillating moon, Lilith, cannot be found without it. So now we are looking at, astrologically, your diamond or your demon, which is of the moon, which are the astrological points that are of the moon, okay? Now, first starting with Lilith, I have a whole series about Lilith and the concepts of that Lilith is... Um, this place of feeling forsaken, of feeling shamed out or pushed out, okay? And um, this is kind of what I've, I'm going through right now, which is why it's so prominent for me to talk about. And I, I have to share that with you to be transparent, but also to let you know how Lilith works when she's pushed out. So, sorry, there's a truck here, let me just cross the street. But if you're listening, I'm, I, I can't see always the comments, and I'm really sorry if you're writing and I'm not able to see you, um, but I promise you that I will respond after I sign off. Um, but if you're listening right now, do you know where your moon sign is? More than likely, if you're tuning in, you know where your moon sign is because you ain't uh, new to this. <laughs> But do you know where your Lilith is? You know, do you know what sign your Lilith is? Do you know what sign your North Node and South Node is? Um, if you do and you'd like to share, please let me know. So that you can follow along with me in understanding how the diamond, right? The entities of the moon, astrologically, work out for you. Because I'm going to share with you how, briefly, very briefly, how they work out for me. So I have Lilith in Aries, right? And so I have this deal with Lilith, right? Because all Lilith placements, in my interpretation, are ignited when feel pushed and cast aside, okay? So my Lilith experiences that. And whenever I feel like I'm being pushed or cast aside, that I, my Lilith becomes very competitive, Okay, because I have Lilith in Aries. I also have um, oscillating Lilith in Taurus, which um, can actually make me extremely indulgent. 
as well. So you have two lows, but let's not get too complex with this right now. And I want to stay focused for you. So when my Lilith and Aries, because I feel this the most, the average mean Lilith and Aries is ignited and I feel cast aside, I'm trying to beat out every single person in my field or whatever it is that I'm doing. Okay, that's the first step because darkness is chaos. So you're going to feel it like extreme on many levels when your Lilith is ignited, right? So it's, it's very chaotic versus light, which is order, right? So everything you see, your sun sign, your rising sign, everything outside of you is order because it's light. But the moon, which represents the inner world, is chaotic. It's darkness, okay? So um, Lilith becomes chaotic. She is chaos energy, divine chaos energy. And so what this tells us about our connection of Lilith, which is of the moon, right? Which is a part of your demon or your diamond because everyone has it, whether they realize it or not, because it's the inner world of chaos, right? That it needs to be tamed. That's the whole thing that I'm getting to, that this is why religions would call demonic power wrong and evil because when not tamed it is dangerous especially if taken out to its highest form right so for me what would a competitive what's the worst outcome of a competitive person and think that Lilith could take that in 10 times that right and so I understand um you know the religion that I was born to is Christianity but I understand why many people have adapted to this mindset that demonic power and demonic energy is wrong and evil because that could be the outcome, right? But I want to talk to you about the concepts of taming that energy. And you can see that in Lilith. You can tame Lilith. Um, and there are tears to that, in which I do talk about on my YouTube. I won't talk about it right here, but you can tame Lilith. It's just not as easy as you might think and when you do tame Lilith she starts to fight for the highest good of that zodiac sign right um, but another way that you can tame your dark energy is to look to the north node and the south node because there actually lies the points of destiny and that is something that we can all work with <laughs> you know so your north node energy in western astrology is considered um, something that you go towards and the south node that would be something that you're moving away from but in vedic and hindu astrology they actually talk about how important it is that the south node is more heavierly um, addressed because um, the north node which is rahu they call the north node rahu which is like the dragon's head like it becomes very hungry and you can be very miserable leaning into your north node energy because it wants it so bad and sometimes when you want something so bad you lust over it and when you lust over something so badly and you really really want it it kind of eats you up and then your moon energy it, your demon energy specifically is again evil and hurting you right it's hurting you from the inside because lust is turns into rust <laughs> you know and you rust from the inside so that's the vedic opinion so what do we do because western has one way vedic has another way well i really think that the whole concept um here is to understand that healing right healing and making things better is by mending remembering and integration i use the word integration but some people would say mending because to heal would be to mend right that's to heal it together put it back together so for you guys and for myself to understand how to tame your demon which you'll feel through lilith right and through rahu sometimes is to understand that you have to put the two together that the north node and the south node or rahu and ketu are 
two balancing things that you must lean back and forth towards that you must incorporate both with okay k2 or the south node which is the dragon's tail right that part is something that you naturally have mastery for it's something that you've developed in past lives it's something that you know and understand it's gifts and talents that you bring into this life and um with that being said it's familiar to you and so if it's familiar to you then you can use it to your advantage because it is what you can lean on when you're feeling demonic energy that you cannot control okay so sorry guys i'm almost out of the noise area here but again your south node in the k2 that is energy that you can lean into so that you feel at home so that you feel comfortable okay so for me that's Scorpio energy right so if you know where your south node is let me know and tell me what about your energy is familiar to you your south node familiar you know is familiar to you so for me being in Scorpio even though I wasn't born into astrology I didn't grow up with astrology knowing the depths of psychology and psychological things it brings me comfort you know because you need to understand um, that this demon power demon energy while it is power right the diamond power because it's chaotic it can lead you into places of the mind that are very uncomfortable like depression you know and so these are some of the forms in which it comes out. Either it comes out and it's physical and then it attacks and it attacks and it goes crazy, it goes off the walls, or you feel like you can't do anything. You know, you can't do anything. Actually, depression is a very complicated state of mind. You know, clinically, chemically, and medically, I can't speak on that. But psychologically, I can say from my experience that depression is actually chosen by a more spiritually mature person because they're not acting out as much, right? They're not flailing themselves. If they're not, if it's not spiritually mature, then it is um, safer, right? Understanding safety more because when you're in depression, you don't go anywhere, you don't do anything, so you repress yourself, you stay in one space, so you become stuck right all of this to say that these are the ways in which a chaotic demon can show itself it can be flailing all over the place and <clears throat> trying to control everybody or trying to get revenge or trying to compete depending on where your Lilith lies you can see how your demon would would act chaotically right but it can also be depressed <coughs> so understanding your north node and your south node and in your points of destiny will help you to move out of this depression right and if you lean too much in the south node you'll be stuck if you lean too much in the north node you'll be miserable and you'll be flailing all over the place so you really have to understand that this moon energy is it has to be tamed why does it have to be tamed because the order of the sun and the light still exists we still live with the sun we still need the sun we still operate in light right you can call the sun false light whatever but it's still an integral component if not the main component of our existence on earth and so order is necessary and so this is where a lot of the religions which are actually sun dominant religions right the sun their sun dominant religions will repress the moon energy and will say that demonic power is wrong because they are sun dominant but the key here is to integrate and to merge the two so that the Lilith Rahu south node and the diamond energy is controlled tamed and when that occurs you you get destiny points right hence Beyonce is a part of destiny's child um and I, if you're just tuning in I'm using Beyonce as an example because she is the one who's putting this um, information out and I'm sharing with you my interpretation of what I feel like is being given and gifted 
So we need to understand that um, there is healing that is that happens when you integrate the two. Okay, when you integrate integration, period, is a form of healing and mending and putting things together. So you have to understand your Lilith and pull her out into her higher realms. And you have to mend your North Node and your South Node together, meaning that you're not leaning in one or the other, but you're doing them both. Sometimes you're doing the South Node, sometimes you're doing the North Node, right? But you're always understanding that concept of balance, that concept of putting the two together, just like how the sun and the moon come together on a new moon, creating new possibilities. It's the same thing. And the sun and the moon, when they oppose each other, they're in full moon force, which means that they are fighting against one another. The sun, the light versus the dark. That's what a full moon is. <laughs> okay? So when we understand these things, we can now in, in put them into our life. Now, I came across a really great astrologer. Her name is Claire Nocti. She does Vedic astrology. And... Um, I love her because she actually really opens me into the world of Vedic astrology and the, and the nakshatras. And um, I actually have in my course how the two work together, a Vedic versus Western, how they're both different and how they're both the same, right? And this concept will always be light versus dark. There will always be an opposing force against you, right? And I think I think the purpose and meaning of life is to find how to mend these opposing forces. At least for me, that's the journey that I'm on right now. Maybe later it might be fighting again, but right now I'm in this place where I'm trying to mend it. And so Claire Nocti, she talks about how utilizing your south node energy, which is your mastery, it's the energy that you're most familiar with, is how you can activate your deepest creativity, okay? Sorry, motorcycles. Um, and so where your south node is, right? The house and the sign that it's in. And if you know Vedic astrology, then look at your south node and its position in the nakshatras. And understand that if channeled this way, if channeled this way, you find your deepest creative space. Your deepest creative um ability because the south node isn't trying to get something like rahu is uh like the north node is it's just it is what it is so it's a it's an uplifting of everything you have learned in lives before this one and in light and in this life and so it to channel your deepest creativity which is darkness because darkness and chaos is creative energy right then and then like um the light is actually order so the light is the um editing right? The light edits your creative energy so it becomes um, something even more perfect. So when they work together, they work very well. So utilizing your south node to tap into your chaos creative energy and then utilizing your north node to edit it so that it's ready to be put out into the world, you are healing yourself while healing others. And usually tapping into this energy is what makes it more impactful on others and to end this basically and seal it off with what I feel like is happening in what Beyonce is saying and what she's sharing is that with lemonade and with uh, Black is King and the gift right that she tapped into her, into her demon time which is she tapped into her diamond which is she tapped into her her power, her dark power, okay? And through tapping into her dark power, right, her demon time, her diamond, she is able to create from a place of deep esoteric healing and knowledge. So all of the symbolism that is there, she probably does know, but maybe she doesn't always because when you tap into creative energy, there are forces that are working in a place that even you are not aware of. Like, you can't even see the layers of symbolism that are happening here. And um, that's kind of why it, it, it's really powerful, okay? 
And don't be scared because some some people might say, well, you know, just going after wanting that kind of power is is not right. You know, like I want to impact the world and that's not, you know, or I want to be powerful. And some people are against power and that's okay. I understand why. Um, but understand that Rahu energy wants power. The North Node wants to be on top. And so that's how you give it what it wants through the south node creative energy but it's tamed it's tamed through creative energy because creative energy is interpretation only it's not going to form itself into some kind of dictatorship or anything like that it's it's just purely a message through creative action and this is what it looks like to merge your light and your dark because too much darkness is chaos too much light is too much control Um, So I'm here to share with you that every time I want to share anything, it's because I'm going through it myself and I'm trying to figure out how to understand the feelings of depression that I go through or feelings of being stuck. Also understand the feelings of wanting to lash out and say fuck the world and fuck everybody in it, you know. And the only thing that actually gives me a little bit of relief is working on my own creative means in which my chaos energy is channeled focused and when I channel it and focus it um I I just wrote um something and I looked back at it and I was like wow this has a lot more layers than I even intended for it to have and I think that that is tapping into my own diamond and demon energy because my Lilith takes it out through Aries, which is um, competition. So I felt competitive. I wanted to compete. I want to be better than all these people who are my supposed enemies at this current time. And um, I went to my drawing board or my writing, music, whatever it is that you do, but that's what I went to and channeled the energy through that. And I'm continuing to do that um, in order to help me through this phase that I'm going through. Um, So I hope that this will help you guys to understand.